Hey everybody, I've been thinking a lot about the iPad and the whole thing we have going on here with um, GarageBand and potential for Logic Pro. And I started exploring one of the other competitor apps, which is Cubasis by Steinberg. I, I've always liked Steinberg. I think they make good products for the most part. And, and so I was like, you know, what is what is the deal here? What is it that we could learn in terms of a, a Logic Pro collab with an iPad? You know, what is it that we could do with both of these? And so that was uh, the what this spawn this video and that's why we're talking about it. So I have both of these. I have both GarageBand and Cubasis open up side by side and I wanted to make a list of some of the things that I thought were strengths with Cubasis and um, one of the, some of the things that I think that um, we have with GarageBand which are you know really big strengths. Uh, and so that's what I, I want to talk about for the next few minutes. Now, first and foremost, I think one of the best things about Cubasis is how much it looks like Cubase, the, the full version for desktop or you know laptops. And so I think that that's a, a huge thing that's a stumbling block for GarageBand right now, and I'll explain in a minute. Um, but we have in here so much that looks a lot like Cubase. So if I go to the mixer, I've got my channel strips up and down with faders and I can click on the E to edit, uh, which gives me the all of the things on the channel. So for instance, I can tap to add an effect. And uh, for instance, you can come in and add some Waves plugins. They have a few that you can get pretty cheap um, for this platform. And so then you have, you know, this whole format which we're really used to and which you know works really well let's close that down um, i can come into the setup and i've got a set of preferences that looks very much like what we would expect from like a desktop daw in many ways uh, so it's like you can do audio and i can change my latency the multi-core processing, background, it's like all of this stuff are things that um, are useful. So let's close that down for a second. Um, we can come through with our routing and do things with that, input and output. We have our instrument. Um, we can do inserts, sends, MIDI effects, automation. Uh, and so, Let's do that here. We'll draw in some automation. Close that down. So it, it feels a lot like a bigger workstation than just an iPad, right? Um, I mean, we even have like a CPU meter. I mean, it's like all of these things which are so useful. So what don't we have on this? Let's open up uh, one of their projects here. For instance, one of the demos. Okay, so this is one of the demos. I'm not gonna push play on this because I don't own the copyright to the music or have permission, um, but we have like audio file here. So I can double click on that to bring open the file editor. I got fade in, fade out, normalize, reverse, trim, erase, or select. Um, so some real basic editing. And this is the problem I have with all of the iPad apps is that you know we, we can do things here that um, we've been able to do in other places for a long time, but nothing of the new features. Uh, we don't have the ability to do a lot with timing and, and fixing timing of uh, different things. Um, we're missing a lot of capabilities here and in every app. Uh, and so that we don't have. But we can do basic editing and we can do mixing. There's the small, medium, extra large versions. And we can go full screen with this too. I mean, I just have this down for ease of switching back and forth. But 
so much that we can do with this. And then let's go, for instance, into like the piano and we'll go to keys and we can play it here. There's pads, uh, chord triggers and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, and then with MIDI editing, we have a piano roll, which we have quantization, transposition, all of those normal things. But again, super basic. But all of this ties into the full app, the full Cubase app. And so it feels very similar. And I think that that's one of the, the things that's a, a real struggle for um, GarageBand because it feels so different. Now, I will say, uh, let's create just a new project here. And let's put a drummer on here. And so even on GarageBand, um, we have some of the best instruments. It's like we have drum uh, drums in Cubasis. Uh, there's actually a whole pack of retro drums, which you have to pay extra for. They're not part of the default. And I couldn't find a step sequencer or any kind of pattern thing, but it did have MIDI files. Uh, so you could go through and load up some MIDI files, but the drummer is, is far more complex than that. Uh, but it's already, it's like these buttons at the top of the screen. There's the one with the the three little boxes, one bigger box and two smaller boxes. That's this view of selecting. That's not an intuitive thing. This doesn't look like anything you would use in Logic. Um, the button next to it, loading up the interface, none of these things attach to what we're expecting. Um, the mixer button, which you think that's a mixer button, pulls open the side properties, and it doesn't look like a mixer. I mean, that's a... Uh, I understand that they're trying to create something new that's efficient for this interface, but it's so foreign for anybody who's worked in Logic um, that the, this app doesn't lead to more use of Logic and Logic users don't feel comfortable coming over and using this app. Let's keep on going though, because we're, we're not even done with that. Um, here, so I opened up the mix option, right? And you can see I've got a compressor with just one slider and then a, a treble and a bass for EQ. I mean, this is so simplistic. Uh, and then master effects, echo and reverb. I mean, this takes a lot for granted of what people want. You know, you're not forced into just that. So, um, but most people look at this and they think, oh, that's all you have, this is useless. You can click on there and you see a rack of effects and we can open up the compressor and see more and we have a, a visual equalizer, which is still simpler than the logic one. It just has bass, mid, and treble. Um, but let's click on edit. And you see I have a couple slots here which don't have anything. And I've got bit crusher, chorus, distortion, flanger, microphaser, overdrive, track echo, track reverb, tremolo, vocal transformer, plus anything that's an AU extension. So all of these additional things that I've downloaded, plus all of the audio units from Apple. And so we have a lot more things happening with this uh, that we have access to. And I don't, I do have this EQ in here, um, which has additional bands, which are kind of nice. And you can buy even more. There's, uh, I think, some of the fab filter stuff or... Uh, other things which you're going to spend a little bit more money on, but it's still just like twenty to thirty dollars, so uh, not a huge cost. But we can do all of this here um, by adding them. So uh, let's see if I want to. Let's pull that one out, delete it. But it's a little bit of a pain to get into that, right? I mean, that's not straightforward. Um, so again, we're focusing more on content here than anything. Uh, so we have, for instance, the step sequencer, which in and of itself is really a pain to use. Because if you program this in here and then go out to this, 
it doesn't stay there. So you actually have to program it, record that into a track, and then continue working. So this is not something we'd ever face in Logic, this workflow of having to create, record it into a track, and then move forward. So it's it's different. There's like all these little quirks about it that don't match up. It feels familiar. So for instance, um, we can say, you know what? I want the alchemy synth. And there's a version of alchemy in here, which is impressive and comes with a lot of presets and has the sound. And then we can open this up in Logic and continue to tweak it. That's cool. But it's like misleading um, because... It feels familiar, but it's not. Uh, and that's that's one of the biggest things. So another example, um, we might want to use like um, one of the smart base patches. And we could use one of the patterns. Right? And so it has this all of this stuff to help us create without a lot of the um, the abilities that we might need. So as an example. And um, we're gonna click on the front here where that icon is, I'm gonna say automation. We'll turn on pencil mode, which again is not that uh, intuitive sometimes. And we draw some automation, right? All we can really do is automate the volume. I can't automate any of those plugins I'm using. Uh, I can't add anything to that. And so it becomes this, uh, this struggle between almost having power and not having enough power to do advanced things. Sure, we've got a bunch of loops and we've got a bunch of sounds that we, that we could add. Uh, we have world instruments and we could do inter-app audio or the audio unit extensions. Uh, let's go to more sounds here. We can come through and find orchestral instruments and acoustic things and sound effects. I mean, there's so much here. And we're not even talking about the live loops functionality, which is a big deal for this functionality if you want to perform uh, in a live situation. Cubasis doesn't do anything with that. And the live loops area is a huge part of what this app can do. And so what I think is the hardest about this uh, is that it's so different. So when I come into Cubasis, I immediately felt at home uh, in terms of using Cubase. And I thought, you know, so much of this feels really great. It's like I'm expecting this stuff on the left side, and I can actually open up a mixer, uh, which looks like what I'm expecting. Um, and it's not perfect. I mean, it doesn't have everything, but it certainly has a lot of functionality. Uh, which is so useful. The one thing I haven't actually figured out yet, um, I know I had some automation open here a minute ago. Um, I don't think I can automate, for instance, all of the plugins in here. Don't quote me on that because I don't know for sure. I'm wondering if there's a way to easily know. I don't, I don't know. So I'll have to look that up. It's not as straightforward in that sense. Um, let's do channel strip E. Oh yeah, okay, so we can. So for instance, I'm on the bass here. Let's come up here to the piano first. So we'll do piano, channel strip setting, right, and I'm gonna, well, I don't wanna play anything. Let's just see if I'm moving this little knob here. Just put it in read mode. Yeah, it's moving it. So we have full automation here with everything. Um, and that's something we can't do in GarageBand. So once again, more features, not all of them, but more features. And it has that familiar look. This is something I think Apple could learn from some of these other apps. 
instead of making something that alienates users, make something which looks and feels familiar for the pro user so that they'll come and use it. Uh, give us the ability to feel like we can touch the software and feel like it's an extension of what we're doing instead of just something that's always on the edge of replacing what we're doing. Uh, I think that this is an important, uh, important lesson. Anyway, I digress. I just wanted to show you these two apps and, uh, and give you a little taste of some of the things which Logic and Apple could be doing with the iPad format instead of what it currently is, which is uh, creating an amazing tool. I love GarageBand. It's very powerful, but it's also so limiting in some ways that I find very frustrating. And so I can't work in there all that much uh, for some of the things I'm doing. Just to give you one more thing, it's so nice being able to have some of these Wave plugins on here, um, but we have like Waves Tune real time. I mean, it means it works on an iPad, but they haven't, as far as I can tell, made it available for people who use things like Apple GarageBand. And so hmm, we're stuck a little bit. Um, on top of that, we have the L1. And just, I mean, it's all so close to being great. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at this and found this a little bit useful. Uh, more coming on this, obviously, I believe that we're on the, the precipice where things start to change. And I hope that we're all going to enjoy those changes.